Hello and welcome to episode 208 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 5th of May. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been working on in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, a gadget, a blast from the past, a couple of confessions. They're quite big confessions as well. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group or uh, emails etc. And I have some information on my shop update and also what Jensen's wearing at the very end of the podcast. You can find at the bottom of the video there's little sort of time stamps and you can skip along to whatever section that you're interested in the most. So we have a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and you can find the hashtags for those in the description bar down below that those are craft 20 a day basically doing 20 minutes a day of whatever craft you enjoy and also the spring shawl along for 2022 and basically any sort of cowl shawl wrap uh, can count for that. So let's get on with the good stuff shall we? I have picked up a project that I sort of did half of a little while ago and that is the Great Ambition Mittens and this is a pattern by Diana Waller and it's a colour work pattern and of course they're for Adam because they're Slytherin and they're made of two colour colour work and it is some Jameson and Smith in two colours. Um, I don't know what the colours are off the top of my head um, but I will put them in the description bar down below. This is actually quite a tealy green, but I had some in my stash and I thought, well, I'll try and use that, but I did have to buy a second ball to finish the second mitt. Not that I finished the second mitten. <laughs> I have got this far on the second mitten, so I've done reasonably well. And you can see that the thumb gusset is starting to work together. And I've got some of the color work on the front. You can sort of see where I am if I compare it to the first one. So I've still got quite a bit of a way to go on those. But Adam keeps saying to me, where's my Slytherin mittens? So I better get a move on. <laughs> so I'm knitting these on some higher, higher flyer trio needles and I like these for colour work specifically for mittens and sort of socks because they're sort of cross between a DPN and do a magic loop. When I'm using magic loop I find that the edges down here of the colour work get really tight but I can pull the stitches flat like that as I'm working them and they're the same tension all the way around and I prefer them to DPN needles as well because you're only working on sort of two main needles and then having the working one uh, working across and you've divided your stitches into sort of two sides and when the pattern is written sort of in a way that the front and the back of the mitten are divided it's easier to sort of keep track of where you are I think. So these are my favourite needles um, for colour work on mittens at least. So that's how I'm getting on with those. So this is the Puff Shawl by Lisa Much and actually my mother-in-law Liz knitted all of this up to this point and she did cast it off but I decided to undo the cast off edge because there was still quite a bit of yarn left and I thought I'd really like it to be slightly bigger. So this is a yarn from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, Knits called Galaxy that I've had in my stash a little while and I also had this Debbie Bliss Angel Super Kid Mohair and Silk in colour 15009 in my stash for a while as well and I thought actually those go together really well put together two things out of my stash to make something that's really pretty so this is the puff shawl by Lisa Much and it is sort of crescent shaped shawl and I just thought that actually it could do with being slightly bigger and I'm going to make as much of the extra yarn that I've got left over as I can so this is the repeats that they, they say in the pattern and I thought it might be nice to do a couple more so I have started knitting on that again, um, but I haven't done very much at all. So I'll keep you posted on how I get on with this one. So I'll just show you the back as well. You can just about tell that that's the back because you've got the pearl bumps from the mohair sections. But I love these fluffy little mohair sections in between. And there we are. So I've started knitting on that again and now we're on to the crochet section. So I've done a whole row on one side of the 
this blanket which isn't that many really but <laughs> i'd keep you posted on how i'm getting on with this blanket so this is the battenberg blanket by sandra paul from the cherry heart podcast and i'm knitting a blanket for jensen i'm not quite sure whether i'm going to do it sort of a lap size so that he can use it when he's older as well but i might even make it bigger than that because it is quite an enjoyable project to have on the crochet hook not the needles <laughs> and i'm going to just keep carrying on um until i get sort of bored and i am going to do some sort of edging around the edge i think i was thinking maybe do something a little bit like i did um for the pattern another pattern that sandra did was the nature's walk blanket and that had a really nice edge on it maybe something like that would be really good so i'm working on these two edges here and here and i've squared off the top two edges so that i'm just working outwards on two sides and it's at the moment it is square um, but i'm thinking it might be a rectangle eventually i'm just going to keep getting wider at one side until that's the width i want it probably going to do it about this wide so not much longer it's got a little bit of a way to go on there um, but that is a really lovely pattern so this is a free pattern and they're gorgeous little crochet squares and Sandra has a tutorial on how to join them and I'm using that tutorial to join them as you go and that's why I've got this sort of open-ended edge here because that's how you sort of add them on um, but I really love how this looks. I have crocheted a little cushion out of this pattern before and I was really pleased with it when it was finished. So that's how I've got on with my Battenberg. I haven't actually started this next project yet but I thought I'd show you that I caked up the yarn ready to use because it would then get me to get started on it. <laughs> It always it's always the starting of the projects for me that always takes the longest but these four yarns i picked up from the east anglia fiber festival a little while ago and i've got them in the wrong order it should be that order so i've got some really deep purple and a slightly lighter purple and these are both from ducky darlings and they're both on the poison colorway but different bases this is a um, yak silk and merino and this is a merino and nylon and I have two more. This one's the Woolen Witch and it's the Snail Pace colourway. This one is the Camel's Yarn and it's the Love Letter colourway. And I'm going to be doing another crochet pattern. Ziggy interrupted, so I'm really excited to start on those. Next week, hopefully I'll have at least a few squares to show you. But I thought I'd show you that I've got them caked up and ready to go. So that is going to be another crochet project on the go. I thought I'd go on to my sewing section next. Now I haven't done loads on this but I did think I'll show you the progress because I think it has made quite a difference adding some stitches on my little hexagons. So last week I showed you that I'd stitched my little hexagon blocks onto these panels that are going to form the sides of my box for my hexagon box and this is a pattern by Emma Jones from vintage sewing box and I'll link the pattern in the description bar down below and I've added some stitching all the way around all of the blocks and some of them I've put little X's on the side I wanted to keep it simple because I did do one where I did loads of flowers all around the outside and it was just too much so I thought just some little kisses on every other side panel i thought that that would be nice so i've done all of the side panels now ready to join together um, to make my little hexagon box i'm going to do a contrast um, lining on the inside because i think that will really finish it off nicely but that is the stitching done on the, on the outside at least I'm going to swiftly move on to the next section and this is my gadget section and I was thinking hmm what am I going to have the gadget for this week and I was sat on the sofa and in the place I always sit doing my knitting or crochet whatever craft that I'm doing watching the telly and I saw my little wooden tape measure keeper and I just thought this was a great um, idea for a gadget so I had this as a gift off a lovely friend and it is basically just a standard rolled up tape measure but in this gorgeous turquoise colour in a little wooden case and I have that next to me on the sofa so whenever I need to measure something I've got it really to hand and it also looks really nice in a little wooden case as well it's really nicely shaped I think it was from one of those lovely little market stalls where you get handmade wooden things and this was a tape measure holder 
I do think a tape measure is important on in all your sort of project bags and things and I tend to have at least a standard roll up tape measure like this like in my handbag and in every sort of position that I position myself around the house but in my knitting bags I tend to use these retractable ones which is really handy because you don't actually have to um, you don't actually have to roll them up again which is ideal and ideal to have one in your handbag as well you go into a shop to get some furniture or something to fit in your house and you you need a tape measure to make sure it fits so i always like to keep a tape measure in my handbag as well and these are my favorite retractable ones um, but i do like any sort of tape measure they're very very handy in every handbag and and project bag that i have so there we go that's this week's gadget the next section is blast from the past and i made this absolutely ages ago it's a little lavender bag that i've made using bobbin lace now i haven't done any bobbin lace for absolutely ages um mainly because i haven't really had time with having a new baby but also because there's there's only a certain amount of sort of lacy lacy things um that you can have around the house but i think that, that making a lavender sachet is a lovely idea um to use for bobbin lace i must get my bobbin lace cushion out again because it is fun to make um but i do have a number of pieces that i haven't actually finished mounting and things so i really need to finish those off this is a piece of torsion style lace and i will pop a link in the description box down below of the book where i got it from if you are into doing bobbin lace yourself um and i do have some very very basic tutorials on how to do bobbin lace but this is a little bit more complicated than that so if you were to start on bobbin lace i'd start with something much simpler than this so there we go that's this week's blast from the past and i have that hung up on the wall in my craft room actually um just because it's really pretty and i couldn't bear to just put it in the drawer or in a bag or something so next is my confession section i've been so First of all, I have ordered myself an advent calendar from another dyer because I always like to treat myself and it's also nice to support some friends who do dyeing as well. So this year I've chosen to buy the Giddy Yarns advent calendar and it is the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory theme so I'm really excited to receive mine. Um, so that's my sort of Christmas present to myself sorted. Now I've had quite a few people asking me when I'll bring my advent calendars out. I'm not actually releasing mine until 1st of August. I feel that it is far too early to be listing things this early in the year uh, for me personally and also I think it gives you guys time to save up your money um, instead of having to fork out so much money ahead this much ahead of time. So those will be out on the 1st of August and I'll leave a link to in the description bar down below to where there's more information on my website um, on previous themes etc. I'll be releasing the theme to my advent um, well in advance that you can sort of make a decision whether you want to hang on and wait to purchase mine or purchase somebody else's. So that was my first naughty purchase which I can't show you that because it's obviously quite away from advent time. But I did get something framed professionally and I'm so pleased with this. So this was a sampler that I finished in 2020 actually. Or actually I think I was a bit naughty. I think it was might have been the first couple of weeks of 2021. And I'd actually put 2020 already on there. So I thought oh, I'll just put 2020 is fine. <laughs> it was only a couple of weeks into 2021 so this was a sampler that i got um from a charity shop actually and the sampler itself only cost me five pounds but i did find um a place from a, a sewing shop that actually did reproductions of this pattern so you can still get a hold of it so i will post a link in the description bar down below so that you can see where to get it from um, but I finally got it framed and I got it done professionally because I thought I'm just going to make a mess of this. I'm going to get it done properly. And also I was having real trouble getting a frame that fit the size of this pattern nicely. So I think it was possibly 12 inches by 21 inches, the size that I needed it to be. And practically no, there was nothing anywhere near that. And I'd have had to have a massive gap either side. And I thought, right, I'm going to treat myself so this is a solid oak frame so it was already expensive to start with when i chose the frame 
but I did pay for the extra fancy glass which you can't see a reflection in hardly so you can if you sort of tilt it where the wind is reflected in it but it is a lot lot less reflective than any of the normal glass and it is actually called ultra hue uv70 glass um, and there's some information on the back of the frame actually that tells you a bit more about it so you can see that it is very professionally done and I got it in I've got it done in a local framery called picture this and I'll leave a link to that in the description bar down below um, to, if you want to if you are local you could contact the company as well and this is some more information on the fancy glass that I purchased so it was actually 150 pounds to have this framed so it was very expensive but for the amount of time that I put into stitching this I thought I'd treat myself so if I hadn't have had the fancy fancy glass it would have only been a hundred so the fancy glass was an extra 50 pounds but there were some samples in the shop and the comparison it's unbelievably transparent this glass it's just you can hardly see it's there um, which is absolutely fantastic and it also protects the stitches as well so I'm really really pleased about that and I'm so excited to put it up in the lounge I thought I'd have it done in a really nice oak because that'll go really nicely with our furniture in there as well so really pleased with how that came out and I think that the way they've stretched the piece so nicely and neatly I'm just I'm so pleased I had it done professionally so that was a bit of a naughty spend <laughs> but it is something for the house as well so I don't feel quite so guilty so that is my confessions for this week so next I have a couple of questions from the ask me anything thread but I've also had instead of people putting them in the group on Ravelry I've also had some emails as well so feel free to email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com if you don't use Ravelry. So, first of all, I had an email from Steve and there was two parts to his question. So the first was, I have a colourway called Gold, which is this one, and it's on a merino yak and silk base, 60% merino, 20% yak and 20% silk. And he said he really liked the gold colourway that I have and he was curious that if I have any similar, if I have a colour that would be the same on a mul mulberry silk base. And unfortunately I don't have anything quite the same, not quite this sort of rich because a lot of the colour is actually from the base as well. So the colour on a lighter yarn will that actually come out like this which is really quite different <laughs> so that's the color that I put on to this base um, but on a, a lighter base so you can see what the actual dye color is so it is really quite different and I don't have anything that is quite this rich I think the closest thing I have is walking on sunshine but it still isn't as deep as this sort of gold golden yellow colour and at the moment I don't have anything quite as dark as this in the yellows mainly because if you look at it really closely a lot of the colour is actually from different tones of the actual fibres itself um, which is really lovely so this is what the yarn looks like when it is undyed so you can see the beautiful natural tones in there are really complemented by the lighter yellow colour and muted quite a lot. So I'm afraid I don't have anything that will be the same on a mulberry silk as well. You're particularly interested in the mulberry silk and with it being mulberry silk, the mulberry silk silk always looks slightly lighter than other bases dyed in the same colourway as well. So it really needs to be quite a rich colour to be anything like this. So I'm afraid I don't have anything um, that compares to the gold colourway really. The second question that Steve asked was, is Adam still doing any knitting or fibre related crafts? Or is he too busy with Jensen and also working in the business as well? Well, he has got some plans, Steve. He has got plans to knit Jensen a little hat, um, but he hadn't quite decided on what yarn to use just yet. I thought a hat would be really good for him because it's nice and simple. And also knitting it for Jensen would be relatively quick as well compared to an adult size garment. And he is also 
been busy now he has been doing this for quite some time now he has been 3d printing me a sock knitting machine but he hasn't quite perfected it right yet they take a little bit of titivation and the, the little bit of time he has he hasn't got that quite in working order yet so hopefully at some point that'll be working and it'll be something that i can use to make samples for the shop I've got a second question from Angela, who is the Shropshire Crafter on Instagram. Um, so Angela was saying she wanted to make some slouchy socks and perhaps was thinking about doing sort of DK weight socks. And she was also asking me, is there a pattern that I'd recommend out of the patterns that I've designed um, for somebody who hasn't done a lot of sock knitting? Um, so in terms of DK socks in my patterns I've only really got one that I have that's written for DK yarn properly and that is my newer Starlight Wishes pattern. It is written for DK and 4-ply yarn. So this is the DK and this is the 4-ply version and I think this is a relatively straightforward pattern. So I have tutorials for the bobble stitch and also this sort of aster stitch as well um, to help you. So if you are new to doing sort of pattern socks, if you've got a tutorial it does help. So in terms of DK socks, that's the only pattern that I've got that has a proper DK pattern I'm afraid, Angela. But some of my patterns do go down to a 46 stitch sock. So you could possibly do the 46 stitch size and do and use a 3.5 millimeter needle and it'll still work. Although you wouldn't have much leeway for different sizes. This one, there's sort of three size choices and it gives you help in the pattern um, as to which one to choose for your size of leg. So I've got a few samples here of the socks that I've, I've um, designed. So I've got these two, I've got the Christmas candy cane socks and also the mistletoe kisses socks. I'd say the mistletoe kisses is slightly simpler plus when you've got past this pattern section here, it's relatively plain for the rest of the foot. So if you've done increases and decreases and a small amount of lace, um, that'll be relatively easy and you've just got these bobbles there. Um, the candy cane socks, I would say that they were slightly more complicated. If you've done cables before, you'll probably be okay. And I've also got one to five stitch increase tutorial on how to help you do this one as well. Um, but the pattern is only down one side, so it's not too bad. There's not tons of cables all over them. I try and make sure that there's little tutorials to each of the patterns that I design so that if anyone needs a little bit of help or just a little bit of confirmation that they're doing it correctly, I think that helps a lot. So in terms of my other sort of patterned socks, um, I've also got the Country Garden pattern, which has got sort of tiny little cables all the way down the foot and some trellis at the top so I'd say that these two were a more complicated pattern and the mistletoe kisses and the starlight wishes that I showed you before was a slightly simpler with tutorials to hold your hand but I do have a couple of free patterns and this is the love and to cherish socks and they've got infinity symbols on the legs and I designed these actually near to my wedding time uh, which was five years ago today this is our wedding anniversary and these are a free pattern and actually if you've done lace increases and decreases that's quite a simple pattern and this one's free as well I do have another pattern which is called the V for Valentine socks and that's also free with a similar sort of lacy motif on the side but except it's a heart with two little sort of v-shapes underneath but that pair of socks is in the wash at the moment so i couldn't show them to you so my advice is i would go for one of these three sock patterns so i'd go for either mistletoe kisses the one of the free patterns either this or the v for valentine ones with just simple lace on or the starlight wishes i think um and if you're looking for a dk one i'd go for the starlight wishes sock pattern because that comes in dk as well i'm hoping now to every time i design a sock pattern it's normally around christmas i'll include the dk sizes as well that is my ask me anything questions so hopefully that asked, answers your question angela as well my next section is the shop update section and i have just got quickly to show you the yarn that I did actually put in the shop last week but I didn't actually have the sample here to show you because the delivery man came after I'd recorded the podcast of course because it's always the way 
<laughs> so this is the new colourway that I got in the shop and it is called Seaweed Dance and it's from the Waterworld collection and I only actually picked one out of this collection because this was the only one that I really liked so I just picked the ones that I really am attracted to the colours and we've got like a turquoise, green and pink tones in this one and this reminds me of some of the yarns I first started knitting again with so um, I think it was 2008 possibly I started doing sock knitting again after I learned as a child I picked up a ball of sock yarn and some needles from my local yarn shop and it was one of these sort of patterns where there's like some little speckles in some of it so you have these sections where there's se where there's speckles in the stripe um, and that just really reminds me of sort of getting back into knitting. So that's in the shop as well. I have got quite a lot of other opal colourways if you're interested in, in knitting with opal yarn. So this is my favourite commercial sock yarn so I thought I'd sock, stock some myself because it's sort of a happy medium between being a little bit rustic but also being soft as well for a sock yarn. So I've now taken down the May sock clubs and the mixtape minis from the website but the next month's Junes will be up on the 20th of May until the 5th of June and those will be shipped on the 10th of June and those people that have ordered the May and June clubs together those will all be shipped on the 10th as well. So every sort of two months I'm going to do the I'm going to do a listing for two months worth of clubs like I did for May and June um, with May's clubs so in June I won't be doing the two because I already did the May and June together so then July and August will be there'll be a listing for you to order two if you wanted to to save on postage you can you can purchase them month by month but if you want to you can purchase two months and I'll ship them on the date where the second month will be shipped but you're saving on postage there if you do want me to combine more than two months, do let me know and I can do that for you. And that's all for the shop update, but I, I'm going to hand it over to Jensen with his new outfit for today. So today we've got a lovely blanket that my lovely friend Jenny gifted me from my local quilt group. And it is so cute with these little caterpillars and leaves on. And we'll have lots to point at when he's older and say, look at those leaves, etc. <laughs> And the lovely top was made by my friend Claire using a cricket machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm really surprised how well the print actually stays on when you wash them loads. Because obviously we're washing loads and loads. And it's really lasted really well. So I'll have to get some of that myself to have a go. And again, he's wearing his tangerine trousers. And these are a pattern by Sew so Over It. So thank you very much, Jensen. And you can see that he's scratched his face. Look, you little monkey. <laughs> We've been filing his nails every day and he still manages to scratch his face. Bless him. Thank you very much, Jensen. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye.